Ah, yes. Influencers. Aren't they something? Always influencing us regular folks to do things with their influencer ways. Yet as we know and have seen time and time again, some of these influencers really are putting on an act. They aren't who they seem to be on these social media apps and more often than not, eventually get exposed for who they really are. Now it seems like you guys really enjoyed the first list we did, so naturally we had to make a part two. If you guys have yet to see part one, check it out. But to no surprise, that list included editing photos and buying followers, among other tricks. This video brings us five more tricks influencers use to catfish you. But before we start going off, smash that like button as it would really help the channel out. And you know you wanna help your boy. For now, let's get into things. Starting us off at number five, they endorse products they don't use or like. I mean, at the end of the day, a brand reaches out, offers you 10 bones to post a picture with some CBD product, odds are you're gonna do it, especially if you're in debt between school loans and credit cards. It's a no-brainer, yet here I am still not posting the damn photo. I'm kidding, guys. On a more serious note, though, we've seen so many influencers post pictures with some of the most random brands and companies. However, the one that sticks out to me the most would be when President Trump and his daughter Ivanka endorsed Goya Foods after they endorsed Trump. It was just so random and out in left field. But I'm not here to talk about politics, guys. Instead, we gotta talk about some of the other influencers who have aligned themselves with brands that, well, they just don't match up all that well. Of course, there were the handful of influencers who promoted some skinny detox tea claiming it helped them get a slim figure when in reality they were editing their photos to make themselves appear to be thinner. Aside from that, there have been other influencers who have promoted a product without disclosing some very important information. In some cases, these influencers were getting paid to promote the product and forgot to mention that part. As of the last few years, a law was passed requiring those getting paid to promote a product to clearly state so. However, prior, it was the wild, wild west. And other times, as I said before, the influencers just do it for a paycheck and don't really care much about the product or the post itself. A great example would be when Scott Disick teamed up with Booty and promoted their protein shake. However, when he posted the photo, the caption read, I quote, here you go, at 4 p.m. EST, write the below. Caption, keeping up with the summer workout routine with my morning at Booty UK protein shake. Turns out Scott literally copied and pasted the email, likely from his PR firm, and made that his Instagram caption with the product in hand. He quickly changed it after someone realized, but talk about not really paying much attention to your brand deal there, guy. On the number four, we got engagement groups. Now, you may or may not know what an engagement group is. Technically, they're not allowed on Instagram, but it seems they do very little to stop them. An engagement group is simply a group of people, either on Instagram, WhatsApp, Telegraph, you get it. It's a group of people on a platform who share their latest Instagram posts with each other for engagement, likes and comments. The way it works is everyone in the group follows one another and then when someone shares their most recent post with the group, you like and comment on the post. Then when you have a new post, they're supposed to reciprocate. To no surprise, this creates a significant increase in a user's engagement, which would then not only help push your content more across other people's pages and Instagram as a whole, but makes your profile more profitable. If you have this many real, genuine, active users engaging with your content, imagine if you endorsed or sold a product. At least that's how brands see it. Now some may see this as a smart move, but the reality is, if Instagram somehow catches you doing it, rumor has it you could get shadow banned, which pretty much means they don't show your profile often in people's feeds, even if they follow you. That being said, I know tons of people who literally have groups of friends and they all send each other their latest posts to comment and like, which technically isn't that an engagement group, yes, but they're not necessarily doing it to go viral and get brand deals, so. I'm not sure if they would be at the risk of getting shadow banned. Other people have been known to actually buy likes or comments, which is also illegal according to Instagram. But something I will say that never made any sense to me is if you buy followers or comments and likes in hopes of getting brand deals, eventually the brands you work with will realize your followers aren't buying the products. Therefore, they'll stop working with you. It just seems very short lived. I don't know, I bought followers on other platforms before years ago, and then I ended up making a brand new account altogether because it just, I don't know, I find it just ruins the account. Like you just, you have all these random followers, you don't have any engagement, it looks bad. This is bad news, don't do it guys. Learn from me, my old Twitter account is just garbage. <laughs> Up at number three, we got agency and manager run accounts. Some of your favorites don't even run their own Instagram accounts anymore. Sure, it's them in the videos and photos, but they're not the ones making the captions, posting the photos, replying to the comments. No, they feel they're too important and busy for that. Instead, they hire someone to do the dirty work if you will. Sometimes they'll have their assistant pretend to be them, while other times they'll have an entire PR agency behind the scenes working a way to maintain or potentially change an influencer's image altogether. This doesn't mean that said influencer is never in control of the account, but sometimes they likely don't care to continue being the persona they've portrayed, but don't wanna walk away from the money. 
So they quite literally fake it. This leads to another person or a group of people pretty much pretending to be somebody else by posting content with the influencer and pretty much pretending to be them. Replying to people's comments and even DMs, commenting on other people's content, and even replying to other people's stories are all tactics that could potentially be done at the hands of one or numerous other people. And of course, they wouldn't be who is shown in the profile. It's kind of like a catfish, except the person is real and sorta involved, so it's in a category of its own. Dogfish? I don't know. On the number two, we got fake giveaways. Believe it or not, sometimes when you see that influencers are giving away a car or a ton of cash, they really aren't. There's a few ways to fake these giveaways. For example, an influencer can give away a car to a non-existent person, AKA a burner account. Obviously you'd have to look like a real person, so there would need to be photos and such, but you get the point. It's also possible they give the product to a friend or a family member that their followers wouldn't realize, so they would have no way of getting caught. That way they actually give the prize away, only to get it right back. Now I will say for the most part, these influencer giveaways are legit. Whether it be for sponsorships, tax write-offs, or simply just to show their appreciation, influencers usually do follow through on their word. However, sometimes they don't, and this is just one of many ways they could fool their followers. And now in at number one, we got poses. I know, random, right? But hear me out. A lot of these influencers pose a certain way to make themselves appear to be more muscular, more slim, have a bigger tush. You get the idea. Now you could say that models do the same thing, but we know that models are posing. That's their job. An influencer does technically need to post content, but not every influencer is a model, nor do they portray themselves to be. Yet at the same time, a lot of them will pose in certain ways to make themselves appear to be someone they're not. How model-esque. I won't lie though, I used to pose all the time in my Instagram photos, and now I just don't care because I've realized, guys, it really doesn't matter at all. And like, look, it's one thing to pose for a picture. Like, you smile, you pose, whatever, that's normal. But I'm talking like the real, like, they go for like the angles of like, one leg like this, body's turned here, head's turned this way, and it's like, just take a candid picture. Now that being said guys, for other influencers, it is very important to maintain a certain image. Some have actually pointed out that if you pose one way or another, you can look very bloated or very slim. In fact, influencer and journalist, Danae Mercer went viral for exposing these tricks. Sharing images of herself side by side, she would show how influencers pose in very specific ways while taking very casual looking photos. But that's just it, these influencers aren't being casual at all. They're pretending to look a certain way naturally when most people feel in reality, it just sets a very unrealistic and unhealthy beauty standard. Speaking with Insider, Mercer said, I quote, the danger with social media is we feel like it's more real life than what we see now in magazines and on TV. But it isn't, not really. It's incredibly filtered. And she doesn't mean filtered in the sense that they change the color of the sky or add a few clouds. If you know, you know. She means the lighting, camera angles, and of course, their casual poses. She went on to say, I quote, people don't realize that what looks like a casual photo or just chill gym session is usually very posed, very styled, and very deliberate. And that's okay. The posing is okay, the styling is okay. All that's okay, but I think we need to be educated. She went on to say that similar to how we know photos in magazines are photoshopped, there should be more of a conversation regarding what goes into these influencer photo shoots that appear to be so casual and possibly even candid. And she's 100% on the money with that one. All the photos you see from your favorite influencers are usually the work of a team. The influencer, a makeup artist, a hairstylist, photographer, lighting, who knows who else is part of that team. And yet they make it seem like just another day. <laughs> what a joke. You guys wanna see what an influencer looks like on another day? Look at me right now. This is it, look, bags under the eyes, unshaven, probably got some nose hair sticking out. Who knows, guys? This is real life, baby, welcome to it. Anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts on this one down below. If you haven't seen part one, be sure to check that out now. Either way, I'm going to be replying to some comments from the part one of this series, so let's see what we got. Jamie Byford said, I've never seen someone change their appearance so drastically with a shave. If you guys wanna see me clean shaven, be sure to check out that first video. My beard has obviously come back, so it's been like two or three weeks or so. But yeah, I do look quite different when I shave, I will say. Uh, not so different, but definitely different. Charlotte Lucas said, Brad Paisley's song, Celebrity Says It's Best. When you're a celebrity, it's adios reality. Just wanted to include this comment because I haven't heard that song in so long. A lot of you guys probably don't know this, but I used to be a huge country fan. It's kind of gone downhill big time as of late. But like Brad Paisley is like a goat in the country world to me. And Jason Alexander is in that music video. It's actually very funny. So, and it's true, 100%. Jesse Lynn said, can we talk about Jared's hee hee though? Oh, that was the video that I literally just said something like, smash that like button, let's get into it, <laughs> And then I started going, 
like, I don't know guys, I'm sure you can tell in this video, I've been doing a lot of things off the cuff. I just like to have fun. I don't take things too seriously anymore. I mean, guys, this is a list of top five tricks that influencers use to catfish you. There's a lot of awful things happening in the world right now. This is not one of them. So this is something that I'm gonna try to have fun and I'm gonna try to entertain, because that's what I am. I'm an entertainer. You guys are watching a video about influencers in a time when America is on the verge of a civil war potentially. So I try to have fun and I try to make you guys laugh and that's all I'm trying to do with that little hee <laughs> hee. So glad you guys enjoyed it though. <laughs> Kiara Roberts said, we need to know what kind of hair products Jared uses on his flawless hair. I don't even want to take off my hat right now because it's so disgusting. I don't really use much, I just use, and I've spoken about it before, like uh, essentials, coconut oil, shampoo or something. My hair now is just, it's a no go. It's a, it's a, it's a no thank you. Probably looks similar to this. <laughs> Good hair day, right folks? Now you guys probably don't wanna know what I put in my hair because it looks like this, which is why I'm always wearing hats. The other day, guys, I would recommend just getting a haircut. Shorter hair, much easier to maintain. Anyways, been your host, Jared Bronstein. I love you guys lots, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Mwah.